Hey everybody, we are back again doing some more testing on sweeteners and we tested four different sweeteners over the past four days in our coffee to see how they would affect our ketones and glucose to see if they will break your intermittent fast. Here are the results. So I've got a smile on my face, but I'm not really happy. A couple of weeks ago, we tested Stevia, Sweet and Low, Splenda, and Equal, and those results were not very good. No. So we wanted to see what some of the other sugar substitutes, um, the, the sweeteners that a lot of you guys asked about, uh, would have an effect on our blood ketones and our blood glucose. Yep. So here we go again. Here we go again. So follow the same scientific method, meaning that we came up with our hypothesis, Tested our hypothesis, gathered our results, and came to our conclusions. Same methods, basically. Yeah, no exercise. Uh, we intermittent fast 16-8, uh, no supplements. Yep. So we always started every morning with the baseline at kind of zero minutes, and then we tested again at 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and 120 minutes. Ready? I guess. So, hypothesis number one. Coffee with erythritol will not knock us out of ketosis or raise our blood glucose. So we put one tablespoon of er erythritol, this one, in our morning coffees and because uh, as far as we could find out, the equivalent typically for erythritol to sugar was a one-to-one -one ratio. So we had earlier tested one tablespoon of sugar. And we, uh, here are the results that we got. So, uh, with a tablespoon of erythritol in our coffee, Becky's ketones started at 1.7 uh, and ended up at 2.1. Now, she did she go up a little bit to 0 0.8, 1.8, and then down to 1.6, and then back up to 2.1 over 120 minutes. Your glucose started at 77, went up a little bit to 90, and then down to 79, and again to 77. So, you ended up with your ketones being 0.4 millimolar higher than you started, uh, and your glucose was, was exactly the same. Yeah, so, so that actually, if you just look at those results alone for me, it kind of looks like erythritol did pretty good for me. I gave, my ketones went up a little bit and my glucose stayed the same. So, right. um, however... We have, you have to compare that to you know, just, the, just the coffee without the erythritol. Right, and when I had that, uh, my glucose stayed the same, but my, my ketones actually took a bigger jump up. So they went 0.9 millimoles up from start of the test they went twice to as, the end. They had a two times bigger increase with coffee only compared to the erythritol. Right. So the question becomes, did erythritol blunt my body's ability to produce ketones? I don't know. That's the question that gets arise. So All right. So here we go with my results, which are always so good. So I started at 0.4 ketones. Um, went down to 0.3, and then I was at 0.3, and then I ended up the test at 0.3. So my glucose started at 91, and it just gradually went up, uh, 105, 100, and I settled at 102. So that's 11 points up for me. Ketones went down a little bit, I mean, you know, negligible. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, if we look at that, um, and we compare it to my black coffee results, mm -hmm. Black coffee, about the same with my ketones, yep. exactly the same. Mm -hmm. um, but my glucose dropped 29 points with black coffee over two hours. So with 11 point increase and 29 point decrease, that is a 40 point difference in glucose between those two. Right, and now we're getting into the significant numbers. Right. Uh, so did erythritol uh, increase your glucose? Well. Compared to black coffee, we'd have to say it yes. Certainly did. And this is typical, I mean, you know, you, 
my issue seems to be a lot of times with my glucose and your issue seems mm -hmm. to be a lot of times with your ketones. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the interesting thing that we're finding from all of this testing that we're doing is that we are really demonstrating the difference between two very different metabolisms, insulin resistance insulin sensitive person yeah. yeah and how these different sweeteners af affect you and that unfortunately comes down to what our conclusions are so will uh, erythritol in your morning coffee raise your glucose possibly depending on your metabolism right for me no for you yes yeah. will it uh, drop our ketones possibly <laughs> Right, depending on the metabolism. Me, no, you, eh, possible. Yeah. Uh, is it okay to put erythritol in your morning coffee <laughs> uh, when you are intermittent fasting? Um, again, depends upon your metabolism. Yes. You know, I, I would not. Drink or beware. Sideways dumb. All right. Yeah. All right, on to day two of our testing. Day two. Okay, so hypothesis number two, we tested monk fruit, which is... Lohangguo, is that how you say that? That's as good as I could do. Something like that. Um, a lot of people ask about this one too. Mm -hmm. So our hypothesis was that uh, using, and we only used a tiny little bit, a uh, half a gram in 16 ounces of coffee, which is less than like an eighth of a teaspoon, I think. Because we were trying to match the sweetness for trying sure. Match the sweetness, which is sometimes difficult to find those it figures. Uh, so our hypothesis was that it would not lower our ketones and it would not raise our blood glucose and it would be okay all right so what did we find so our findings with that for becky she started at 1.2 ketones went up a little bit uh 1.7 and 1.5 and then she finished at 1.2 again right on the mark where she started and uh her blood glucose started at 96 and you know, it was it was up and down just a few points from there and, and ended up at 91 at 120 minutes. So I would say it kind of a neg negligible difference from start to finish for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. um, and here, here again, it looks like ah, no effects, right. right? Monk fruit had no effects. However, my ketones stayed the same with monk fruit. When I had just black coffee, my ketones went up 0.9. Right. So again, same, same conclusion. Yeah. Did it blunt my right. ability so to produce to nothing, ketones? It's not very good. Yeah. All right. so, so my, uh, my results, um, get ready for these. I started at 0.4. I went down to 0.3. And then I went to 0.3. And then I finished at 0.3. Yay me. Uh, my blood glucose started at 100 went to 99 went to 100 and then went to 95 so i mean pretty negligible change yeah. there just kind of stayed everything just stayed kind of even yeah so again that doesn't sound too bad but i did have a 29 point decrease um with black coffee only so again this stuff seems to be keeping my glucose at a level where normally with black coffee it would it would drop. Mm -hmm. We seem to be seeing some effect on our body or our liver or what something's going yeah. on. It's not like it's doing nothing. These things yeah. aren't just doing nothing. Yeah. So. Um, so will monk fruit raise your glucose? No. No, I would say that's pretty negligible. No. Will um, monk fruit knock you out of ketosis? That's possible. I mean, yeah. it, it's possible. My, my number went down a little bit, but I wasn't really, you know, technically in ketosis. Right. Your number stayed the same where normally with black coffee it would go up. Right, my ketosis. So, yeah. again, so it, it's upon your metabolism. Your, your metabolism. Um, is it okay to put monk fruit in your coffee when you are intermittent fasting? I would not. I'm gonna give it I would not. We would give it a, thumbs. a side thumbs. Yep. Okay. On to day three. All right. Hypothesis number three xylitol and let's get it out of the way because i know we'll get a lot of people that will say it don't feed this to your dogs got it. it's really bad for them got it okay so hypothesis number three um and we used a tablespoon of xylitol because it seemed to be a one-to-one -one ratio with sugar sweetness with a tablespoon of sugar um will a tablespoon of xylitol in our coffee knock us out of ketosis or raise our blood glucose mm -hmm. And let me add that xylitol does have a glycemic index of 12. That's a pretty low glycemic index, but it is higher than these other, these other ones that came in around like one 
and right. stuff like that. So right. that was kind of a, a factor in the back of our minds. Right. Uh, so uh, xylitol, you started your ketones on that day at 1.6. You went up a little bit at the 30 minute mark to 1.7, but then you dropped down to 1.2 and then you finished at 1.3. Mm -hmm. That That's pretty unusual for you. Yeah. Um, your glucose, this is another unusual finding, started at 86, um, went up to 109, went up to 112, and then settled in at 106. Yeah. That was really unusual. Yeah, and unfortunately, those paralleled my results from sugar. Yeah. Actually, yeah, plain old good table sugar. Yeah. Uh, where, where with sugar, uh, I started at 1.3, ketones and I went down to 0.7. But your blood glucose was still higher mm -hmm. at the end of two hours with that and it was higher with xylitol. Yeah, so that wasn't a promising thing. So then we went on to your tests. Yeah, um, this is a really good day for me because I was so excited. I started at 0.8 ketones. So excited. In that and then I knew I was going to have to drink that stuff. We should have used your, ang I'm an angry young old man. I should, I should, yeah. I think it says not an angry old man. I know, it doesn't. It, it, it wouldn't been, apply to that. No, nah, it would, not, it would <laughs> not go. So I started at 0.8, and then it just, just boom, down to 0.4, then to 0.2, and then I settled at 0.3. So it just like, just knocked me to the floor mm -hmm. as far as my ketone production. Mm -hmm. um, I had my blood glucose started at 98, and it went up to 113 and then stayed at 110 for the for the 60 minute and the 110. So again, you know, another rise in glucose. Mm -hmm. And you know, that was... Yeah, so compared to your results from coffee alone, that was really a lot worse. Right, yeah. Uh, compared to sugar for you. Sugar actually I started, I started pretty high in ketosis and even though it knocked me out at the 60 minute mark, I actually came back into ketosis a little bit at the end. Mm -hmm. So um, my body handled that a little bit. It seemed like there's a possibility that your body handled sugar better than yeah. it handled and I, and I ended up with a seven point increase um, in my blood glucose. So, um, so this was a 12 point. So this actually, I, I think that this, this actually seemed worse than sugar. It it does have it does point. I mean, this is a small yeah, it's a small test. Two people, uh, two different metabolisms, but th it wasn't positive. Right, and we and we should point out before we forget that you know this is this is a, an N of two, right? right. Two very different people. Um, if you've got questions on specific stuff that you want to use, because we can't test everything, mm -hmm. you need to test. Just test and see what happens with yourself, yep. because it may be different than what we're getting. Yep. So let's do our conclusions on xylitol. Will it uh, raise your glucose? Y uh, possible, yes. I think, yeah. Uh, will it knock you out of ketosis? I'd say possible. Uh, I'd say possible, yours, depending yours on... mine, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm knocked out. Yep. So. Is it okay to put xylitol in your morning coffee when you are intermittent fasting? I'm going to say no. I'm gonna, we're going to give that one a and definite a thumbs, thumbs down. down. That yeah. might be one and, of our first ones. And sorry, all you xylitol people. Yep. yep. That's, that's a tough one. Alright, on to day four. Day four. <laughs> and day four was, blocked it out of my memory, allulose. So we get a lot of questions about allulose. Seems yeah. to be like the new wonder Which sweetener. Which does look like a little bag of cocaine. It, it certainly does. <laughs> Hopefully uh, we don't get raided while we're doing our video. Okay, so our hypothesis for allulose. Uh, coffee with allulose will not knock us out of ketosis or spike our blood glucose. What did we find? Right, so we used a tablespoon of allulose because again, it, uh, well, from what we could find, it was, that was the equivalent to the sweetness of a tablespoon of sugar. Yeah. So allulose, with you, um, you started at 1.1, a um, little bit up to 1.3, then 1.2, and then back to 1.1. You were exactly the same mm -hmm. at the end start, at, at two hours later mm -hmm. than you were at the start. Um, your glucose started at 83, it went up to 82, down to 78, and you ended at 84. I mean, you were almost exactly where you started, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. again, do you, you get that kind of idea? It's like, well, so it didn't do anything. Right, no right? effect, but. But well, if, we, if we compare it to just coffee without any of the sweetener, your ketones went up. Mm -hmm. 
right? With just black coffee? With just black coffee. Yeah. So, so again, you know, these, these things aren't just doing nothing. Exactly. They are affecting us. Yep, good. All right, so um, another stellar day for me when it came to ketones. Um, actually, today I started at point three. Um, then I went to point three, and at 60 minutes, I went to point three, mm -hmm. and Exciting. drum roll. At 120 minutes, I went to point four. Yeah. So, very good day. Uh, my glucose started at 107, dropped a little bit to 99, 93, and 95. So, it did go down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, All right. <sighs> so, let's, let's do our conclusions here again. Um, will uh, coffee with allulose um, raise your blood glucose? I'm going to say no. Will allulose in your coffee knock you out of ketosis? Going to our results, I'm going to say no. So, is it okay to put allulose in your morning coffee if you are intermittent fasting? You know, we're like, we're like gravitating toward no. Um, it might depend on your, on your metabolism. It's, I, let's go with inconclusive. Yeah, oh, inconclusive. Save our, save yeah. Our, so. yeah, and, and None of these tasted very good. No. So we're glad to be done with this one. We, we are. And we're never going to revisit sweeteners again. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> okay. All right. You ready? Let's bring it on home. All right. All right. So uh, what did we find about when we tested erythritol? Xylitol, monk fruit, and allulose. Were any of these better than black coffee alone? None of them were better than black coffee alone. Sometimes uh, they would raise your glucose. Sometimes they would blunt my ketones. It was all over the place. Obviously, they are doing something to your metabolism. And, and in our opinion, they are interfering with your body's ability to naturally lower your glucose as you fast. Right. and Increase right. your ketones. Right. So if you're doing, you know, you're intermittent fasting and you're doing your, you know, your, your, your keto coffee with some of the fats that we talked about in the other one, I, I would not add any sweeteners. Right. Any of the sweeteners that we tried, I would not add them because I think that, that they're going to, um, if, if not just, you know, blunt everything and you don't get any good response, they could actually be harmful too. Awesome. If, uh, you know, if your glucose is going up and you get some kind of insulin response at the same time you're putting fat in your body, yep. might not be a good thing. Yep. So. All right. There you go. And hey, getting away from sweeteners is also getting yourself away from sugar cravings. It all, it all works together. Yeah. We're going to talk about that we, sometime. We, we will. And I think we have actually mentioned it in some yeah. other videos. So, all right. There you go. All, uh, four more days of testing some sweeteners. I hope this was helpful. I hope it didn't disappoint you. I hope it gets you farther on your path to yeah. good health. And it's done. All yeah. right. Hey, thanks so much for watching. We'll Please subscribe you. to our channel and we'll see you soon. Bye.